Hi guys, we Bob here, and I'm going to show you how to do kind of a cyberpunk look in either your art or your photos. So you're watching a time lapse of me doing a cyberpunk cityscape type drawing. This one I'd found as a reference, and I was going to do something similar, and so I followed it. And as you can see, it's a kind of guy in the middle of the rain, or a woman in the middle of the rain, running down the street. You don't really quite know the story, and I was just enjoying kind of the rulers and that as per normal in sketchbook. Pro. So in Sketchbook Pro I was a wee bit concerned because I was like I'm not going to find the same kind of things I had in Photoshop but I have and I've found even better things. They probably exist in Photoshop but Photoshop's that complicated. Sometimes the cool features get so dug deep into the program it's quite difficult to find them. So I thought I'd just take you through. So that's that finished and on here this is the, the drawing that you've just seen. And I'm going to extend it up to try and give a wee bit more uh, height to the drawing because I felt it was too enclosed in the way that I had designed it. On the left here is a drawing of Blade Runner that I did a while ago and I'm going to use these two to kind of highlight some of the glow techniques that you can use for enhancing your photos. So it really comes down to layers and these new layers, that are different types of layers that you can use, there's all these ones here dark and multiply, colour burn, and I would suggest that you go through and have a shot at each of these just to see what you can do is you can use a paint bu bucket and then just see what it does to your drawing. So we could do that just now. Um, so we've got our new layer. Let's do a paint bucket of some sort of colour, the blue colour. And I'm just going to paint bucket the whole picture. And as you can see, because it's a normal layer and I've made it all blue, um, it's blue colour. It's went over the whole whole lot of everything. But if I change those layers to darken, now you don't really see much of a difference here, but if I turn it off and on, you can see that it's added a blue hint to the drawing. If I change it to multiply, it multiplies that blue. Colour burn can be quite interesting, um, especially if you keep going over with a darker or a lighter colour. You can see all those different ones um, have got quite a cool feature to them. So I'm going to um, rub out some of that. I've got this glow layer and if I take my favourite, new favourite brush, Conceptual 2, and say I want to add highlights to his eyes, I could do that, giving him a bit more life to his, his face. And it's the same with the, should probably be a bit more highlighted in his nose. And that wee ridge under the nose as well could do with a bit of a highlight. Some of the bits here are highlighted and you get the picture there. Same as her face. Um, I wanted to add a bit more highlight. It makes the image pop a wee bit more. And you can use that to really enhance your drawings to how you want them to be. So if I went with, I wanted this kind of red here and I want to make, you can see how much of a difference you can make to a drawing just by adding some glow to it or using some of these other layers and um, similar to this sign if I wanted it to be nice and bright just bring it across the whole lot to be honest and it seems to have worked and um, take the blue bring it across other signs and you can see you're, you're brightening everything up so if I take you over to the video that I just made of me doing this with a photo okay so this is a photo that I found um, online I tried to find the person so I could credit them with it and what we've got here is a photo of a Chinese I believe street in the rain and I'm going to make it cyberpunk I'm going to show you how you can do this with any of your videos any of your your, your pictures using a layer I go to I'm looking at what layer I can use and I, I go for multiply because what I want to do is I want to give this a pink and a blue look to it and if you look up the colour wheel you can see the colours that I'm using if you want to copy that. I'm making the full thing with this pink multiply and I wanted the, the kind of bottom to be pink and the top to be blue and then I look at the opacity because it was a wee bit too in your face and I wanted to bring the opacity down so now the, the, the ground is that kind of pink neon uh, cyberpunk colour and the top is just a hint of blue to it. So then I'm going to add another layer and in this layer I use is the glow layer so I'm going to change it to glow and this is where you really just start refining your drawing using this glow tool so I'm going to show you some of it to begin with 
um, I'm going to fast forward some of it but it's up to you just going over your picture you can use the tools if you're not confident with a, a brush pen or you could use a mouse to do some some line art using some of the tools that are available in Sketchbook Pro for me obviously I've got my tablet and I use a, a drawing pen but you could do this on a tablet as well and um, like a, a handheld like Samsung tablet or an iPhone um, or an iPad even so yep I've just used the glow area and as you can see if I select a light red I can make that sign really pop so I use the textured brush um, here to add some of the kind of texture to the rain to the to the ground it almost looks like it's flooded um, it's heavy rain at this time and you can see I'm using it to lighten up particular areas just trying different things it's it's all about experimentation um, but I wanted to show you these tools that are available to anybody and you can use it in an existing photo you don't need to be a, a super duper artist you don't need to be good at drawing you can take one of your photos or you can go and grab a photo like I have give it a bit of enhancement and just play around and have fun so I have just been adding the kind of glow effect to the signs I added some kind of raindrops using the glow effect and then I started concentrating on her umbrella um, and the lights as well you can see I've added the glow but I wanted to kind of enhance this umbrella and make it look really kind of cyberpunk type and outline her figure as well with water you need to remember that normally if you've got a bright light it will reflect in a puddle it will reflect in rainfall like we've got here and I'm just kind of adding some of these effects where there's a reflection of the light from the signs you can add you can be as precise as you want you can be as unprecise as you want that's not really about that it's about what you're trying to achieve in the end it's not don't be too hung up on everything being accurate because otherwise you just don't end up doing anything so at this point I added in a colour burn layer and it was just to try and add some shadows to certain areas where I wanted them. I was trying to do it in one of the glow area, it didn't really work. So I added a new layer, I added it to colour burn and then I just started sketching in some shadowy type reflection where I wanted it to be. Like I said before, don't be too hung up on everything being precise. You're just trying to get the final look that you would like. So I outlined her figure with the kind of neon glow it was just the look that I wanted to give it so using one of the ruler tools I decided to make a signpost of a kind of wheel and it has a kind of it's like a wave type ruler and I was able to use it to to produce a wheel type sign and give it a kind of neon glow gave her some glow on the outside using an airbrush so the airbrush is really good for giving that overall glow to the signs to the people you again use it as you require I didn't like the two guys standing there, I wasn't quite sure what to do with them so I decided to go back to the original layer and blur them out. For each of the lights, for each of the colours, I went over and I just chose the colour that was on the sign and then kind of dusted over it with the glow effect as you can see. And it's up to you, just play, I mean I added all that kind of lettering in, it means absolutely nothing, I just made it up in my own brain so apologies, I hope it doesn't offend anybody. So uh, there was a bike here as well which I tried to give some enhancement you know it just looks like a wee robot ha holding its hands up or a crab. I decided to add a colour layer in as well again I was just experimenting and that's what I would suggest that you do as well whenever I've been trying to do something and it doesn't quite work I add a new layer on top of the other one and I just start messing around to see what can I achieve draw where I'm trying to draw and then change the type of layer just to see what effect it has. Just going around the picture again highlighting some things, adding some wee touches here and there, reflections in the water and outlining the wheels and the bikes that are kind of sitting in the dark and that's kind of it. So when we look at the original and then we compare it to the end we can see that we've gave it a very nice kind of punk, cyberpunk city look. This can be done with any drawing that you want, you've seen how I did it with the artwork earlier on and yep it's just a great tool I'm really pleased with Sketchbook, it's really coming into its own for me, really loving it compared to Photoshop. So, yep, I hope this has been of use to you, and if so, please remember to leave a, a comment, subscribe, hit the wee bell notification, there's usually a video every week, and there'll be more of these types of tutorials coming in the future. Cheers guys, and wee Bob is out.